Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 229. At the very bottom of page 229, problem number 2.7.1 is what they call it. 2.7.1 at the very bottom of page 229. This should say 229. Now here's what's going on. If you read the problem, you have to have book in front of you. Read the, turn to page 229 at the very bottom of it and read the problem to yourself. It says Elaine received the following scores on three exams. So the person took three, three exams and the scores on three exams were 82 plus 74 plus 90. Question is we are told that the person needs to average need an average of 85 on four exams. So the person is about to take the fourth exam and the person needs an overall average of 85. The question simply is what should be the score in the fourth exam so that the overall average turns out to be 85. Very simple, very straightforward question. Now, here's the deal. There are two ways you can go about this problem. One is what I call the traditional way, the classical way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the conventional way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, the algebraic way, and the other one is what I call the quick and dirty way. Here's the quick and dirty way. We have 82, we have 82, we have 74, We have 74, we have 90, and here is the box there that, that, is, that is the unknown. Now, if, if this person had scored 85 on the first exam, 85 on the second exam, 85 on the third exam, then in order to get the average of 85 on all four exams, I can't tell from the name whether it's a guy or a girl, Elaine, I, I, I believe it's Ellen, she would have had the average of 85, which is very straightforward. I mean, if you take three exams and each of the three exams you score 85, 85, and 85, then on the fourth exam you only need 85 to have an average of 85 on the fourth exam. But the question, but the, but the point is, she does not have 85 on the fourth exam. She has only 82. She needed 85. She only has 82. So we have to make up for three, three, three points. She has to make up three points for the first exam. In the second exam, if she had 85, everything would have been hunky dory. Yes, hunky dory is something I picked up in the desert where I come from. She only has 74, which means she showed 11 points. She needs 11 more points to make up for the fact that she only has 74 points on the second exam. If she had 85 points on the third exam, again, things would have been fine, things would have, would have been dandy, but she doesn't have 85. Well, actually, she has more. What the hell? She has more. She has 90, so she has a surplus. Which means we have a we have a surplus of five. That's how we show the surplus. She has five five more than that she needed. And of course she needs a 85 on the last exam. Let's see what they are up to. Three plus eleven is fourteen. Fourteen minus fourteen minus nine is fourteen minus five is nine. So she has she needs nine more points. Eighty-five plus nine is eighty-five plus ten will be ninety-five. So she needs ninety-four points. That's it. We're done. She needs ninety-four on the last exam. And if, she, uh, she, and if she gets a 94 on the last exam, she would have the average of 85. One more time, it's because the 95 will give make up for the fact that she has 3 short, three, was th th three short on the first exam, she was 11 short on the, on, the, on the second exam, she was 14 points short, but then she got 5 extra points on the third exam, she scored 90, so overall she has to make up, she has to make up 9 points, or rather, I didn't mean to put an arrow there, she has to make up a difference of nine points right here. That's it. That's one way of doing it. And here's the classical way. Classical way is, uh, you know, you, you there's nothing. 
there is nothing novel, there is no, nothing extraordinary about it. You just add up the four scores and you pretend that the score on the fourth exam, the score on the fourth exam is X, which is your unknown, and you divide by four because there are four exams there and you and that represents the average on the four exam and that has to be 85. And then of course you solve for X. And of course if that's the route you want to go then knock yourself out. You, you have my blessings. Let's do the next problem. 2.7.2 2.7.2 on the next page, page 230. Let's take a look at it. Here we have a 12 ounce mixture. We have a 12 ounce mixture which is made up of 40% vinegar. The question simply is how much oil must we add? How much more oil must we add if We want to reduce the concentration of vinegar to 25%. Again, very simple, very straightforward question. The concentration right now is 40%. We want to reduce it to 25%. Let's do it, shall we? Very first thing we need to do is figure out how much vinegar we actually have in the, in the, in the mixture because we're not adding any more vinegar. The amount of vinegar that is in the mixture is, is there, it's not going to change. We're simply going to keep adding the oil so that we can dilute the mixture. So right now the mixture is very concentrated, it is 40% vinegar, it's too strong. We need to dilute it, so we're going to keep adding the oil. Amount of vinegar does not change. So the first, here's the solution. First, we need to figure out the amount of vinegar in the mixture. Amount of vinegar The amount of vinegar is very straightforward. We are told that we are told that we have a total of 12 ounces. We are told that we have a total of 12 ounce mixture of which 40% is vinegar. So whatever the 12, whatever the 40% of 12 is, that's the amount of vinegar we have. So the amount of vinegar is simply 40% of 12. 40% of 12. I know that 10% of 12, 10% of 12 is 1.2, and if 10% of 12 is 1.2, then 40% must be the 4 times the amount. 4 times 1.2, and 4 times 1.2, well, that's same as 12 times 4, 12 fours are 48, so it's 4.8. Because 12 fours are 48, and if you have 1.2, then you just put a decimal in there. That's all. I'm doing a pretty lousy job of putting the decimal. You get the idea. I'm explaining too much. So now we know the amount of vinegar we have. Let's add oil, shall we? Let's add oil. I need the room, so I'm going to raise the top part so that we can add oil. So we're going to continue from here. Let's add oil. How much oil should we add? Well, that's just the whole point. We don't know how much oil we need to put in order to reduce the concentration to 25% from 40%. So we're 
So in the language of algebra, when we don't know anything, we represent typically, conventionally, as x. Again, knock yourself out if you want to use y. I'm going to stick with x. Let's add oil. Let's add, not just oil, but let's add x ounces of oil to the mixture. Therefore, the new amount of mixture must equal the 12 ounce that we started out with plus the x ounce that we just added just now. This is the new amount of mixture. And we need, again I need more room so I need to raise this part also. That's it, that's our new amount of mixture and 25% uh, of that has to be has to be vinegar. And we know how much vinegar we have. We have 4.8. So 4.8, which is the amount of vinegar over the total amount of mixture, this is this has to equal to 25%, which is one quarter. This part represents the amount of vinegar over total mixture. The amount of vinegar we found out is 4.8 and the total mixture is the 12 ounces is the 12 ounces that we started out with plus the X ounce that we added, X ounce of oil that we added, that's all. That's it, we're done. All we have to do is uh, solve this equation and we're done. That's all, very straightforward, very simple. So let's do that. I'm going to raise my bottom so that we can we can make progress. And we just have to solve the equation. That's it. The rest is down here. It's a simple linear equation. We just solve it. Cross multiply it. So we get 4 times 4.8 equals 1 times 12, 12 plus x. How much is 4 times 4.8? I'm going to show you here. 4 times 4.8 4 times 4.8 is same as 4 times 4, which is 16, plus 4 times 0 0.8. 4 times 0 0.8. 8 times 4 is 8 fours are 32. 8. 8 fours are 32. Therefore, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 times 4 is going to be 3.2. So this amount is 3.2. So 16 plus 3.2 is 19.2. That's it. Subtract 12 from both sides and we're done. Subtract 12 from both sides. And if we subtract 12 from both sides, this has a plus sign obviously, this is a minus sign, it's going to drop out and our x equals to 7.2. Voila, that's it, we're done. x equals to 7.2. That's all. Now, I'm going to do one more time what I did here in case, in the event that you had little trouble understanding what I did, I'm going to do one more time as to how I multiplied 4 times 4.8, this part here. I'm going to do it again. I don't want to raise that thing because so that you can see it. I'm going to do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. Okay. This is the part. This is what I'm about to do on the top here. You see 4.8 there. 4.8 times 4, of course, is same as is same as 4 plus 0.8. 4. Four times four point eight is same as four times four times four point eight. This four point eight can be written like this. It's the same thing. Of course, I can write four point eight as four plus. You see, four times four point eight is same as four times four plus point eight. And all I'm doing here, 
All I'm doing here is distributing it. That's all. We're distributing it. 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And then the second part here, 4 times 0.8, which is what I showed you here, right here, is 3.2. And that's how I got. Uh, that's how we got the 19.19.2 right here. That's it. The answer is 7.2. That's it. We're done. I will see you tomorrow on day number 109, and we're just going to keep on going. One day we'll get to our destination. I promise you. Which is to do the very last problem, which is to do the very last problem on the very last exam that they give you at the very end of the, at the very end of the book. Now I say very last exam, it sounds like there are too many, uh, many exams there, there are actually only two. And the reason why there are only two exams is because this is a revised GRE, a new version of the GRE, which only came out last summer, and the ETS, because they do not have all exams to publish, has not put out any, um, uh, much material. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I'm done babbling. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 109. Bye now.